I'm Matt Smith, today on Upfront. A U.S. Supreme Court rejection. The High Court sending the state Supreme Court back to the drawing board. We've got it all covered from the options to the urgency and the reaction. It's a, it's a real surprise. I think it's a real surprise. Plus, a boys basketball team suing the WIAA. The organization's executive director is responding here on Upfront. And it's Oscar Sunday. Local theaters now looking for a post-pandemic blockbuster. Greg Marcus bringing us inside the long road to recovery. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Hi everyone, I'm Matt Smith. Thanks for joining us. Nail-biting anticipation this weekend to see what the Wisconsin Supreme Court will do next. In a win for Republicans this past week, the U.S. Supreme Court threw out the state's legislative maps, backed by Democratic Governor Tony Evers and selected by the state Supreme Court. They kept in place the congressional maps. The justices have now sent the case back to the Wisconsin Supreme Court for its next move with several options, saying the state court had not considered whether the maps, which created an additional majority black assembly district in Milwaukee, comply with the Federal Voting Rights Act. Rick Essenberg is president of the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, which appealed the case to the high court. Hey, Rick, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's start at, at the end of all of this. Uh, how does all of this play out and how does this end, do you think? Well, I think that there needs to be further proceedings in the Wisconsin Supreme Court. What what the United States Supreme Court did is it, it, it told our high court in Wisconsin, you got the Voting Rights Act and the Constitution wrong. You need to fix that problem. Now, we're not going to tell you how to fix it. You can either select one of the maps that have already been submitted by the parties, or you can ask them to submit new maps. Um, it's up to you. Um, but it's something that has to be fixed. And because of the deadline for submitting nomination papers for the fall election cycle, it's something that's going to have to be done uh, relatively quickly. I think that uh, our Wisconsin Supreme Court has demonstrated that it can act quickly when it needs to, and I expect uh, that it will in this case. I was going to say time is of the essence here. Candidates can start circulating those nomination papers April 15th. A map would need to be in place for that to happen. What are you asking the state Supreme Court to do? Well, we think that the easiest solution is for them to simply uh, accept the maps that were submitted by the state legislature. These were the the two uh, maps, the, the governor's map and the legislature's map, which most closely adhered uh, to the least changes approach. They, they moved the fewest number of voters around among legislative districts. Do you think that would result in an immediate appeal, though, from the governor? Well, it might. Uh, you know, this is America. And, uh, you know, if there can be litigation, there will be. Uh, and sometimes there will be litigation even when there shouldn't. But uh, I think in this instance, um, uh, the, the court has made clear uh, that uh, the governor has not demonstrated uh, a justification for drawing maps based on race in Milwaukee County. And yet he drew maps based on race in Milwaukee County. I think it's going to be very, very difficult for the governor to fix that problem with anything uh, resembling the maps that he's drawn here. In their dissent, as you read, Justices Sotomayor and Kagan called the court's action extraordinary and also unnecessary. Does this dilute the power of black voters in Milwaukee? And was that the purpose of the appeal? Well, so the, the purpose of the appeal from our perspective is that um, it, it, it's, it's our view that, um, uh, that the government should just not be making decisions based upon race. We have a long history of that in this country with Jim Crow, and, and it doesn't end well. How much of this final decision now rests on Justice Hagedorn, and, and what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, the conventional wisdom is that um, it, will, uh, it will come down to Justice Hagedorn, uh, 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 there are three justices uh, who, who I think were ready to uh, probably select the legislative maps. Justice Hagedorn did not do that. He said he was not doing that because he thought that there were uh, uh, good reasons to think that the Voting Rights Act uh, uh, warranted a seventh uh, black majority district. Um, I, I think that rationale uh, was pretty much foreclosed now by the United States Supreme Court. So you think this decision by the U.S. Supreme Court could change Justice Hagedorn's mind? Well, I mean, he can't. He, he, he it has to, right? That's the way. Uh, that, you know, that's the way the process works. When uh, the Wisconsin Supreme Court is the court of last resort in Wisconsin law, what it says in Wisconsin law is the last word. 
But on federal law, the United States Supreme Court has the last word. And what happened here is just as Hagenhorn thought that federal uh, uh, law um, compelled him to do what he did, the United States Supreme Court said it did not. And in fact, it could very well prohibit him from doing what he did. And so he's going to have to go back and, and he's going to have to, as, and, you know, judges do this all the time. They're going to have to rethink what they did in, in light of the uh, uh, guidance that they've gotten from higher courts. All right, Rick Essenberg, President of Will. Hey, Rick, thank you so much. Thank you. Sachin Chetta is director of the Fair Elections Project in Wisconsin and an ally of the governor. Thanks for being with us. I just asked Rick Essenberg if this all hinges on Justice Hagedorn. Does it? Well, you know, look, Matt, I'm not a lawyer, but I think you have to get to four justices. And the one justice who has moved on different sides of this issue, depending on the legal issues being presented, has been Justice Hagedorn. That's right. So the governor and Justice Department <clears throat> are now seeming to be offering this alternative to the court, saying, hey, if you don't accept my original maps, l let's keep the number of black majority districts at six, not increase to seven. Is that conceding that this seventh district isn't needed? Well, I don't think that's quite what the governor and some of the other plaintiffs have said. What they've said is what the U.S. Supreme Court has asked for is a train of evidence, is to, to create more of a record. That's not crazy. And it's pretty simple for uh, the court to simply accept more data, more evidence, more briefing, and then say, look, we're going to make the same decision that uh, the governor's map had the least changes from the previous map, which was the standard that they put forward. That's not the standard the governor asked for, but it's the standard that the court had decided. In uh, the absence of that, if the court says, no, we don't think that's good enough, then what the governor said is, Let's just change the part that the U.S. Supreme Court had a problem with. How, how unprecedented is and how big of a deal is this decision from the U.S. Supreme Court? Well, it, it's, a, it's a real surprise. I think it's a real surprise to observers uh, because it's so late in the election cycle. These uh, issues are always being litigated, but when we are three weeks from gathering signatures, when candidates need to know where they're going to run, um, and when the election machinery has already started to crank, it's really late in the process. And that's why Wisconsin feels a little bit like uh, the election system is in chaos right now because everything's on hold and every decision about whether you're going to run, whether you're not going to run, how to manage those elections, everything is just paused and that causes a lot of stress on the system. Republicans want the court to accept the legislature's map. Would that result in an appeal from the governor? Uh, well, I can't speak for the governor, but I do think it would be appealed by, by parties. I think you have to remember that map has been rejected three times already. It was rejected in the legislative process in Wisconsin. It was rejected by the Wisconsin Supreme Court. And just this week, it was rejected by the U.S. Supreme Court. They asked the U.S. Supreme Court to impose that map on Wisconsin, and the U.S. Supreme Court declined to do so. So for the Wisconsin Supreme Court to go back now and pick the map that's a three-time loser really doesn't seem like the right way to go forward even just to follow their own standards. Given the urgency of this that, that you just referenced, what is best case scenario in your mind? Well, I think what's best for the people of Wisconsin, what's fairest for people of Wisconsin right now is to go forward with the governor's map with some more data that says this is the right map. And again, in the absence of that, to say, well, let's make some slight adjustments to that map just in the Milwaukee area and then go forward with that. Bigger picture, Matt, what would be fairer is a totally fair map. This is still a rigged map for Republicans. It's a gerrymandered map that guarantees a Republican majority. And that was baked in when the Wisconsin Supreme Court said that we would have a least changes map. That was a bad decision in the first place. We're now dealing with the ramifications of that. And it's unfortunate that we've gotten to this place. How likely do you think it is the court says we just don't have time to figure this out? We're going to keep the current maps in place at least through this next cycle. I think that's really hard to do because we know those maps are totally unconstitutional because of population equality issues. So I think it's very, very hard for them to do that. I think if they tried to do that, that would also get taken to federal court and cause more chaos in the system. Sasha and Chetta, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Matt. J.R. Ross is editor of WISPolitics.com, our editorial partner. We talked about the political implications that lie ahead. Put into context, how big of a deal is, is the decision from the U.S. Supreme Court? Oh, it's, it's huge because the map that Governor Evers drew and the state Supreme Court had approved basically put a two-thirds majority for Republicans out of arm's reach. If you can get to a two-thirds majority, it doesn't matter what happens in governor's race. You could override an Evers veto if you're a Republican and do what you want. The maps Republicans put in place, put them on the threshold or try to put in place, put them on the threshold of that two-thirds majority. In a good year, they'd hit it. 
with the governor's maps, even in a good year for Republicans, like we anticipate right now, you're not quite there. Is there any scenario where the governor and Republican leaders reach some kind of consensus on this? <laughs> I mean, like the same as I could grow hair, man. I mean, like I really don't see a chance of Evers and Robin Voss agreeing because they've set down such hard lines, right? Evers has said the maps Republicans want are not good for Wisconsin because they are a gerrymander. Republicans have said the maps that Evers wants are a racial gerrymander. There is not a lot of great area between those two positions where they can reach a compromise. So it's all up in the air right now, but there are people who make a lot of money arguing court who are going to have a field day with this because we have a compressed window and very high um, stakes for what the decision is gonna be from the state Supreme Court. Up next, high school sports teams suing the WIAA. The organization's executive director is standing by to respond.